have a music and dance uh, academy whereby mm -hmm. we are adding uh, it is like an, a value add mm -hmm. to the children who attend our programs okay. because many of them are coming from this community there's a lot of stress depression mm -hmm. taking place which community so in kibra okay so yeah. this one gives them an escape and also when they finish uh, high school okay and they want to go to college they have an extra added uh, mm -hmm. uh, talent that wow, can actually yeah. help them to get those slots so basically it's like more of an empowerment yes it's 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 an empowerment and also a co-curriculum activity because okay. most of the schools in kibera don't mm -hmm. have a space a safe space yeah. where the children can play and experience their talent so we give mm -hmm. them that opportunity here okay so sifa this is our children's playing park as mm -hmm. you know in kibera and other yeah. slums there's no safe space for children to play mm -hmm. so look, this is our children's playing park so they come here they swing mm -hmm. there's the balance beam then there's the slide and so when they are here mm -hmm. these are for the younger ones anybody between the age of two mm -hmm. all the way to the age of five or six so we allow them okay. to come here and just swing and just have fun yeah and right now as you can see we're also reclaiming the grass so we are uh -huh. putting some arabian grass wow. that when they're here they can have so much mm. fun home away from that's home. so nice yes and very thoughtful you yeah know? we we are trying to ignite their psychomotive skills because many of them were they're going through a lot of trauma yeah so when they come here we just want them to give them a chance to develop their brains you know I in terms of that you. area yeah yes please nice actually i can even see even the numbers here it's like yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's more of a child exactly you know? yeah mm -hmm. it's even the images friendly, here yeah. you know yeah yeah true it's kind of like child friendly where they can just come and have fun yeah swing and do whatever they need to do oh. yeah so this is impressive like yeah just definitely come. i would so have done that up. yeah so this is our basketball academy yeah. where basically we we add value to our pupils and students. Mm -hmm. You know, basketball is an elite sport, so we teach them how to play basketball. Yeah. But when they finish high school, they mm -hmm. can have an added advantage to be called to several colleges. True. So, see if I here used to play basketball. Do you want to? Ah, I know. It? And then you can, you can also do one. So are you okay. Ready? Okay. Okay, let's do it. There we go. That's the big money. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Okay. Ah! Now. Awesome. So we can give it to her. You can also so try. Sifa is a good shooter. Ah. Yeah, just that she's not the best. Yeah. Uh. There we go. Ah, oh, good job. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Too much pressure. Go, Too much pressure. Yeah, let's see. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Ah, guys, 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 guys. Focus. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Woo. Oh, okay. Almost, Almost anyway, yeah. Good job, man. That's how we do it. Woo! We also have a bakery where we also make mm -hmm. bread. Wow. And this is given to children. You know, here mm. there are many children who yeah. have HIV and AIDS. And some what? their parents have died. So okay. there are children taking care of children. You can find a 13-year-old ah, taking care of a 4-year-old and a 6-year-old. Uh -huh. So most of them don't even know when to take their drugs. Mm. Some of them want to take their drugs, but they don't have food. So you yeah. find that they are fainting. So we make sure that actually we can help them with that program so that they know how okay. to take their drugs, mm -hmm. where to get their drugs, and also they are getting food. So Sifa, this is the awesome kitchen that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where we feed our children, young men and women. So like yeah. now, some of them are coming in. Mm. So every day about 400 uh, meals will be made here. Okay. So depending if you're giving lunch or if, if you're making bread. Yeah. So we have our ovens here. This one uses el electricity. Okay. Because, you know, here, when you have electricity, we, we bake using this one. Mm -hmm. Then when, when you don't have ele electricity, yeah. we, we use charcoal. So this is the one that actually uses charcoal. Oh. So that we're able to bake, yeah, you know, different kinds of stuff. Yeah. Queen cakes and all that. So Bread. Yeah, we also try to keep the highest level of hygiene just to uh -huh. make sure that, uh, you know, the children that are coming here yeah. are fed well and, and they're also loved. Mm. Yeah, so... This I, feel is like I, feel, I feel like I can see it's very clean. You know, we have uh, other places where we keep stuff plates are here so this can uh, tell you the number of people that 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 we feed yeah yeah so we are just trying more Whoa. cups yeah just trying more to put here. things yeah and then this is the fridge where we keep stuff whatever food is there or mm -hmm. something like that so this is where we actually prepare our 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 meals mm -hmm. so as you can see it is a uh how do you call this it is a fast a fast cooker uh, yeah it cooks very fast okay so we have those three banners there so that uh, we, we can make meals as fast as we can Nice. Yeah. Mm. We have adopted a school here called St. John mm -hmm. Community School. Yeah. It has over 450 people mm -hmm. and many of them only have one, one meal a day. Mm. So we ensure that when they come to the center, yeah. we give them food to stay in school. Okay. We also have an adult school called Sunrise School for Adults. Okay. Where we're giving people a second chance 
to ah. come back and finish their primary and secondary education. Oh, wow, impressive. Is, yeah, it is an accelerated learning and you, you, uh -huh. you will be surprised. Uh -huh. There are many people even in leadership who never finished their form four, but now we're giving True. them a chance yeah, to come least. and get that certificate. So wow. it's a great honor for them. Last but not least also, uh -huh. we also have a, you know, a, an urban farming uh, project. Also, we have a, a water project, okay. which is assisting the community. So this is one of our urban farming projects. So uh -huh. we are keeping rabbits and uh -huh. also we are growing some uh, vegetables around. Yeah. So today you're going to hold a lovely rabbit. They usually have very good, beautiful white eyes. Uh -huh. So this is one of the rabbits that we have. You see how cute it is, uh -huh. and, and one of one of the things that that it does, it's uh -huh. very therapeutic, right? Uh -huh. Kids can come and hold it and just play with it. So this is just a it's a rabbit. So how uh -huh. cute it is. Yeah, it's actually so, so pretty. Yeah, so you can actually hold it and oh, hold, like so you can hold from the neck down and that. Okay. Yeah, you just hold the ears. Huh? Oh. Hold them nicely. So so it doesn't. Hi, baby. Yeah. Okay. So it's very soft. Mm. So right now they were just feeding. Eh? Okay. Yeah. So we have some of them here. So the children, the children play with them. It's therapeutic, but also it has very good meat, mm. soft and tender. Yeah. So some of the things that we are doing, and this is also part of our farm. This is why we do okay. a lot of farming, yeah. as uh, you can see, uh, Dixon is doing. Yeah. So we also grow tomatoes. We have some kales that we are growing on the side. Yeah. And so we just had some sacks that are that were here. Mm -hmm. So now we are reclaiming the soil. Like you can see, we are now yeah, using the much. ash mm -hmm. now to reclaim it, use it as manure. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's take this boy back to, to den. where it belongs. Huh? Okay. There we go. There are others in there. Okay. That's so nice, Just actually. Because yes. actually living in Kibra and mm -hmm. then giving hope to these people is a yes. very, it's an actually impactful thing for them. Thank you. And mm -hmm. for me, I think I would just love to understand your journey. Like, mm -hmm. how did you get yourself here? How did I get myself here? Yeah. I was born and raised up in Kibra okay. in a place called uh, Makina. Mm -hmm. Makina is when you are coming from the deceased area and you're driving into Kibra. Okay. So I lived there uh, uh -huh. until the year 2006. Okay. When immediately I finished high school, I moved out of my parents' house. So at that time I was still living in the slum. So all my life yeah. I've lived in, in Kibra. Yeah. And so growing up in Kibra, I was faced with the same challenges that every person, mm -hmm. young men and women face. Number one, mm -hmm. lack of uh, proper housing. Yeah. Our house was 15 feet by 15 feet square house, what? made of mud. Since we were the poorest of the poorest, mm -hmm. because we were living in Kibra, mm -hmm. but, ne but next to a dumping site. Ah, so sorry about you know, that. Yeah, where yeah. people used to come and uh, use it as a toilet, so everything was okay. being thrown there. Our roof, uh -huh. most of it was dripping human feces. Because that's what people used to mm. do, the flying yeah, toilet. Yeah, the flying toilet and, and they all. Up yeah, there, so they we throw it. Yeah. And then, so, it was a very humbling place. Because mm -hmm. that was also our bathroom. There were no toilets. Yeah. So at night, kasuk, things mm -hmm. like that. So those are the kind of life that I lived. Mm -hmm. And so growing up in such an environment, as a, as, as a young man, you, you mm -hmm. wonder, what is yeah. the way out? Eh? Yeah, what is the way out? How will you come out of poverty? Uh -huh. But I want to thank my parents. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I have two older brothers and okay. two younger sisters. Yeah. And I'm the middle child. Mm -hmm. So what happened that is that my mom introduced me to church at a very early age. Mm. So I, I was an altar boy from okay. age eight. Hey. Uh, okay. Yes. So I used to go to church to Our Lady of Guadalupe, mm -hmm. and I, I I was in church for for the longest time. And through that, yeah. I got a number of uh, scholarship mm -hmm. that enabled me to finish my primary yeah. and secondary education. Nice. But by the grace of God, mm -hmm. I was a very uh, switched on child. Mm. I was a people's person. I love yeah. seeing people happy uh -huh. and all that. Yeah. So I took part in a lot of co curriculum activities like uh -huh. drama, music, okay. all those clubs that were there. In fact, yeah. I was almost in every club. Uh -huh. Teachers used to wonder, Nini yeah. I was in almost all those clubs. Uh -huh. But uh, my turning point uh -huh. was in the year 2007, 2008, okay. when we had the postulation violence here. Yeah, I think it was very chaotic. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And so because I was. At that time, I'd already finished high school and I'd not gone to college, but I was doing okay. a lot of projects in Kibra. Uh, there was a lot of fracas that was taking place here. Okay. And food was coming in with the Red Cross and people were looting and stealing. Uh -huh. Of course, that's a story for another day. Okay. But by the grace of God, the, the French ambassador wanted to do something. Uh -huh. So I was invited in a meeting and I gave a suggestion that was okay. adopted then. Then I was oh, made the program okay. officer for the entire Kibra. Wow. To make sure that we feed people yeah. through the French embassy uh -huh. and acted action in Manita, France. Okay. Then after 2007, 2008, after arriving, and Kibaki signed the national accord. Yep. We felt it's good now to start a proper CBO. So we started mm. a CBO called Kibayat Initiative for Community Development. Okay. All through that time, the person who was mentoring me was my cousin Joseph Okello, uh -huh. the former owners of McKinney Schools. Okay. So it, he took me over uh. as his mentee. Wow. So 
through that relationship, through that support, mm -hmm. I was able to go to the US in the year 2009 wow. to work in a summer camp. Okay. So while I was in a summer camp, mm -hmm. is when I saw they were using camp to change the lives of children. Oh, okay. Then this idea came to me. Mm -hmm. So my 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 cousin Joseph has really been uh -huh. a turning point. Yeah. He really played a big role okay. in my life in mentoring me uh -huh. and also ensuring that I went to the US. Yeah. So it's at. Uh, while I was at the camp, I saw how they were using the camp in America mm. to change the lives of young people. And of course, I, I went there uh, for an exchange program. At okay. that time, I joined the University of Nairobi. Yeah. And being that I was doing, I joined there because I couldn't do my degree straight away. Okay. I had to do some bridging courses, uh -huh. right? So while I was there, I saw they were using camp to change the lives of children, young mm. men and women. Yes. Where they would go to a Christian camp in the US, they yeah. would be fed, they would be taught the word of God. Mm -hmm. Even though they were paying, I saw the impact that the camp had on them. Yeah. So I felt... I should start the same in Kenya. Wow. Yeah. So in 2010, they called me back again. I okay. guess I must have done a good thing to yeah, a student exchange program. Definitely. But I wanted to stay. Now applied. in the US? Yeah, I even applied to go to college. I was accepted. Okay. In Geneva College. Okay. But the Lord laid a burden in my heart. And you just had I, to come I back. I didn't bring you to America for yourself. Mm -hmm. I brought you to learn. So I came back. People thought I was crazy. Like, oh, yeah, because definitely, you know. if you're coming from the slum mm -hmm. and you've gotten the opportunity yes. to get out, True. like, it's hard for someone like for instance let me say you've been given mm -hmm. yeah, yes you've gone yes and then thinking of coming back to the same place where mm -hmm. they struggle mm -hmm. it's not something easy that someone can just say hey mm -hmm. i'm here it's true it's true well uh, and also what what gave me the courage to come yeah my family was still in the slum you know i told you i still have, I have two older yeah, brothers and two younger yeah, sisters true. and also i felt that uh, the resources that god had exposed me to uh, when i was living in the u.s mm -hmm. i said if these resources could be brought back home Wow. They could change a lot of lives. Mm. And that's how Christian Best Camps of Kenya was born in 2010, December. Mm. And uh, through then, uh, mm -hmm. just by the grace of God, we've been, the trajectory has just been going up. We started as a mentorship yeah. and a discipleship organization. Okay. During the school holiday, we talk about mm -hmm. 400 children, young men and women, from mm -hmm. the age of 8 to 17, 8 meaning, mm -hmm. they could learn whatever they were being taught, 17 meaning. Yeah. If they never had a role model in their lives, mm -hmm. then they would hear someone speaking life into them. Yeah. Because in Kibra, there are many people who have grown up mm -hmm. who have a father figure, yes. but the father is not... You know, a responsible yeah, father responsible. or a responsible mother mm. because of alcoholism, yeah. gangs, some mm -hmm. have come from jail. So for us to have a functioning society, wow. the mm -hmm. family is a basic unit. So mm. it's important that we start raising these men in a way that they will understand what a family unit looks like. Yes. So we'd break them into those ages. So we'd have uh -huh. like 8 to 10, we'd, we'd mm -hmm. call them Romans. Yeah. 11 to 12, we'd mm -hmm. call them Galatians. Mm -hmm. Then 13 to 14, we would call them Ephesians. Okay. Then 15 to 17, we would call yeah. them Philippians. Okay. So we'd have them put them in a place, they would be mm -hmm. taught the word of God, they would yeah. be fed, career mm. guidance. We'd even have pilots coming with their bags because oh. there are many children, every child wants to become a pilot, but they yeah. don't know the kind of subjects. They want true. to become lawyers, they don't know. And then when they finish high school, yeah. they become discouraged because mm. nobody told them yeah, what true. is required, yeah. right? So we did those kind of camps until mm -hmm. 2018 mm -hmm. when we got this land. Mm. So to date, we've reached over 25,000 households since we began Christian Best Camps of Kenya. And how do you manage it? Because I'm very sure you have to feed them, mm -hmm. you have to ensure like their health and all that. Sure. So how is it? So by, the, by the grace of God, where, where, where I worked in the summer camp in the U.S., yeah. it was a Christian camp. Okay. So most of us who came for the exchange program yes. were students. So okay. most of the students who came there to take care of the campus mm -hmm. were either in Bible school or they were planning mm. to become pastors. So most of them have become pastors of their churches. Okay. So some of them are the ones who are supporting this organization and oh, some of okay. the parents of those kids. Yeah. Because they saw, we've been giving them updates how this camp is changing. Yes. And, and when we started as a camp, yeah. they saw it was changing children's lives. Now yeah. that we are a community center, mm -hmm. During COVID, yes. we were the only center that was open here. Everybody else was shutting down. So we fed over 12,000 families, oh. hand washing stations, the things that we did. Yeah. So the reports that we're giving people mm -hmm. and what we are doing, you know, it's yeah. making people see the impact that mm -hmm. we have. So through that, we're getting a lot of support. We have, a, we have in, an internship program with Riara mm -hmm. University. So wow. we bring the students here for intern years. We have That's 13 so full, nice. we have 13 full time staff. Okay. We have seven volunteers, and we uh -huh. have groups that come periodically uh -huh. from the United States of America. Okay. Like we have one coming in June. They come wow. and volunteer their time. They do medicine. They That's do so all, all, all those kind of things. I'm yes. so impressed. And also, the the country recognized our effort. Uh -huh. I was uh, recognized as the one of the star person. I really saw that. Yeah. Award, yeah, last year by the star, mm -hmm. the Nairobi star. So that was very humbly. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. 
just to sum up, mm -hmm. uh, what let me say there's someone who is struggling, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. He feels like, let me say, well, she feels there's no hope. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I don't know, let, let me say you always hear about suicidal men. Sure. Mm -hmm. So what would you advise to these people or to this person? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're out there, just like uh, Sifa has said, eh, and mm -hmm. you're feeling like there's no hope, I can't condemn you. Okay. Because you know your situation. If yeah. someone is feeling there's no hope, they feel there's no hope. Yeah. And that is the reality. Mm. So how do you come out of that? Yeah. The best way you can come out of that is this. You have to accept your situation. If you're born and brought up in the slum, you have to accept that you're born and brought up in the slum. That's mm. number one. Acceptance. Number two, projection. Where do you want to go? Wow. Myself, I was born and brought up in Kibra. Mm. But I knew there was something better. There was something good out there. Mm. How did I achieve it? Number one. One unifying factor that no one can take away from you is one, education. Two, is your talent. Not everybody can go through school, mm -hmm. but everybody has something they can, they can contribute to the society. It can be through your voice, singing. It can be through maybe, let's say, you've been blessed as an artisan. You can draw, you can paint. Don't look at your circumstances as something that is supposed to bring you down. Look at your circumstances as something that gives you a chance to come out of poverty. So you can just look around. There's always something that you can do. As in, look for something that inspires you. For example, in Kibra, everywhere you go, there is trash. But if there's a house that I went to and I found them growing vegetables out of, out of Agunia, that is a sign of life. You see a skumawiki coming out of Agunia. So that's yeah. a sign of life. So find what gives you life within your setup. Because to me, I may, I may sound like a motivational preacher and tell you tomorrow will be better. Yes, tomorrow will be better, but what action? are you taking to us tomorrow? You have to accept, project, then do something about it. For myself, I accepted, I went to school, and that's where I'm leading today. There has to be an action plan. You cannot avoid that, because if you just sit there and wait for miracles, of course there are miracles, but even miracles must have an action oriented towards it. So you must stand up, just like in the Bible they say, pick up your mat and walk. Don't just sit yeah. there and feel woye for yourself. You'll mm. feel woye until you die out of depression find what you can do. There's a lot of things that you can do. And people like us are here to work with you, to journey with you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Mr. Simba. Yes. And actually, uh, just to end this video, sure. uh, listening to your story, I think mm -hmm. the scripture that, that came into my heart is basically sure. Jeremiah 29, 11. Mm -hmm. For I know the plans I have okay. for you. Yes. Listen to your story, I think mm -hmm. basically that is that's the scripture for you, you yes, know. Thank you so much. So that mm -hmm. said, uh, I know these are short notice, mm -hmm. but I reached out to a few friends wow. of mine, okay. mm -hmm. and they actually responded so positively. Oh, wow. And God so that mm -hmm. said, I have a token for you, oh, wow. thank which you I'll so much. give it to you. I know right now you're wondering, where is this sure. token? But I'll give it to you. Amen. Thank yeah. you so much. So we, are, we are very grateful to whoever mm. gave. We don't know you, mm -hmm. but we want to assure you, it's going to go a long way. Thank you so much. On behalf of the many children, young men and uh, women that we serve. Asante. We are going to have a wonderful time. Ah. Thank you for coming to our ah. community center in Kibra. So I want you to come and now we're going to enjoy some lunch. Mm -hmm. So come, come, come. Yes. So we are going to have a lunch. I don't know if you have a lunch. I don't know if you have a lunch. I don't know if you have some chapari. Ah, chapati madondo. We're going to have chapari madondo. Kabisa, kabisa. Yeah, we're going to eat something nice. Nice. Yeah. Ah, can't we? I don't know if you have a lunch. I don't know if you have a lunch. I don't know if you have a lunch. Yeah, so, yeah. Just, uh, so as in here, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Okay. This is how we live here. Yeah. So also, uh, people survive on eating on less than a dollar a day. Yes. So we have some restaurants here, and yeah. we have our Hilton uh -huh. that uh, I am I am going to introduce you to. Okay. And we are going to have some wonderful lunch. Yes. This afternoon. Wow. So yeah. So Asante. 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 Ah, thank you. We don't have to Ah, kabisa, kabisa, kabisa. Nice, Huh? Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. Look at that. Actually, you missed it, eh? Mm. A lot. Yeah. Mm. It's good stuff. So yummy, actually. I love the meatball. Nani? 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 Nani?
Nana, Tungu. Who's on a master chef? Master chef. Look at that. Hey, your dengu looks nice. You need to apologize. Who come in here for my bag? Mambo mseto. I'm Chef Frank. Uh, we are located uh, a trailer village close mm. to Bypass. Mm. That's a good farm. Do you feel like having some Japan in the farm? Yeah, look at this plate. Like that. Where you have all the delicacies. Mm. 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 The food is so delicious. I can see the customers are enjoying the mm. food. Mm. And I think that uh, everything is going to be fine when you come to this place. To my amazing crew, Asante Sana, and definitely to my people outside there, you can follow me at IG Sifa Katami, Facebook Sifa Katami Story Corner, and YouTube Sifa Katami. This is Story Corner. Have an amazing day.